How did you get over your first love? Story one, with my second love. When I was with my first love, I was pretty sure that was that. I knew everything there was to know. No one had ever felt quite the way I did. Choirs sang, angels wept, etc. Then we broke up and I met someone new. And I was pretty sure that this time I knew what was up. That last time, that was nothing. This was the real thing. And then we broke up and I met someone new. You see where I'm going with this? Lather, rinse, repeat often enough and you'll eventually have learned enough to know which one is right. Some folks are fortunate enough to get it right on their first try. But don't think any less of yourself if you don't. You can't buy experience. Story two. When I was 15, I was smitten over my first serious relationship. During this time, I washed dishes at this greasy spoon restaurant with a cook who was a few years older than me and much rougher. I was a suburban, kind, nerdy, kind of preppy kid. And this cook, Joe, he drove an old Trans Am, smoked two packs a day, and had the malicious energy of a meth head. He picked on me relentlessly, but not like anyone else had picked on me. He did it more like a big brother. He had some sort of respect for me, for whatever reason. So anyhow, we spent every shift bull and screwing around much more than actual work. One day on the classic rock station, he always listens to You Can't Always Get What You Want by The Rolling Stones Comes On. Joe sits down on the chest freezer, puts on the best thousand-yard stare a 19-year-old could do. To be honest, it was probably more of a 200-yard stare at that point. He lights up a cane and looks at me seriously. He says to me, he says, Dilbert. Oh, I should mention part of his picking on me was to call me Dilbert. Anyhow, Joe says, Dilbert, you listen to this flipping song and you listen good. Because that girl of yours? She's going to shatter that little boy heart of yours one day. It's not a matter of if it ends. It's a matter of when. And I can tell by looking at you, you ain't going to be the one to end it. So you listen to this song. And when that hot little bad person breaks your heart, you remember every word. About a year later, she shattered my world, and I didn't think I'd ever come out of it. Joe had long since moved out of my life. I'd changed jobs, and he was probably in jail. But I remembered that, and it really did mean something to me. You can't always get what you want. And to that end, most time what you want and what you need aren't the same thing anyhow. Figure out the latter and work on it. There were some other things that helped me move on, too like writing an angry letter to her telling her all of the cow she did to me. It was cruel, crueler than it needed to be. But it was me taking control back over my life and telling her that, even though we weren't going to last, she ended it in a poor way that was unnecessarily mean and cowardly. Up until that point, we'd been trying to be friends, but that was going horribly. I wanted more than that, and seeing her date other guys was incredibly painful. Part of the letter I sent her included that I didn't want her in my life anymore. It was hard, but necessary. I also burned her letters, but not out of spite. It was actually more like a respectful funeral-type burning. It was just me acknowledging that this part of my life was over and that I needed to let go of it. Today, it's nearly two decades since that relationship. I'm happily married with a couple of great kids. I still actually talk to her from time to time. We're Facebook friends. I wonder what it would have been like. At my 10-year reunion, I walked in and saw her across the room. Our eyes met and it was just a rush of nostalgia for a split second. We spent a good part of the night talking while our spouses gave us understanding yet grouchy looks. Both of them knew what we knew. Your first love is sacred. It's not as sacred as the lifelong love you'll end up in, but the nostalgia tied to it is precious. It reminds us of youth, discovery, energy, feeling more alive than ever before. The first love gives us one of the most important and most valuable lessons in life. So don't trivialize it, but do what you need to do to get by it. TLDR, a meth head told me to listen to the Rolling Stones to help me get over my first love. Story 3, 500 Days of Summer and Believe It or Not, Futurama, Bender's Big Score. Also remember, as cliche as it sounds, there are other people out there. I am a firm believer in the fact that everyone should have their heart broken at least once. When you're young and in love, you really don't know what you're doing or have anything to compare it to. It definitely puts things in perspective. It sucks at first. Really sucks. Every day you wake up and your first thought is of him, her. Once the relationship is over, odds are it's over. Don't waste your time thinking he, she will come back to you. Conjuring up scenarios where they'll realize their mistake and come rushing back to you. It won't happen. They've moved on. They'll find or have already found someone new. Cut your ties. Delete them from your Facebook. Take their number out of your phone. Time passes. Then slowly he or she is in your thoughts less and less. You'll meet someone new. My fiancé and I are getting married this spring and would have never met if that bad person didn't break my heart. 
Hang in there. Story 4. Move on. Psychologists have studied the issue at length, as many of the people coming to them for help are the dumpy in a relationship, and what works best is another relationship with someone else. That being said, do the right things in your life. Exercise, get plenty of sleep, be social, eat right, focus on improving yourself, set reasonable goals and complete them, and reward yourself when you do. Don't be afraid to experience the emotions you feel, but don't focus on them. Too many people end up with DUIs and screwing their life up wallowing in their misery. That just makes picking yourself up later that much more difficult. Story 5. She moved to Chicago. I'm in California. We attempted a long-distance relationship. It lasted three months. What she doesn't know and never will, I planned on proposing on her birthday. In person. Bought the ring. Secured a job. Found housing and bought the plane ticket. Four days prior to her day. I arranged a gift card to arrive at her dorm. My B-Day gift. We'd talked every single day since she left. I hadn't heard from her in three days at this point. This was distressing. The day she got the card, I got a call. She told me she'd been seeing someone else for a few weeks, and that she was done with me. I said, okay. Restock the $2,500 ring. Costing me $250 in restock fee? Canceled the job. Lost the $500 deposit and refunded the plane ticket. Sarah, you'll never know this, but I still think about you almost every day. It's been six years. And though I've been in love since you, you've been the basis for every comparison. You are the great white buffalo. I guess I never got over my first love. She'll always be on my heart. Story 6. I wish people see this because it helped me a lot. Background. I fell in love with a friend of mine some 5.5 years ago now. Met her at university and we slowly became friends and the attraction kicked in. She was dating someone and didn't feel the same. So we decided to continue being just friends. As time went on and I got to know her more, my feelings grew stronger. Slowly but surely, my feelings got in the way of our friendship. We had countless arguments over the situation and even stopped speaking for chunks at a time. We both did care for one another, and just us battling to keep our friendship alive and going was a testament to that. She broke up with her boyfriend about 2.5 years into our friendship. We sort of had a disconnect, so I never got to make a move. Later told that I had by chance but effed it up. She started seeing a new guy, who she is happily engaged to right now, and my world fell apart. We struggled a bit more, took more time apart, and eventually just stopped talking. How I got over the love of my life. In the Futurama movie Bender's Big Score, Fry ends up going back to the past after Lars shows up and sweeps Leela off her feet. Fry claims she'll never be happy without me. Later in the same movie, after working with the narwhal Lilu and loving it to bits, upon learning she has to be let go, he makes the same statement. He then finds the narwhal in the wild and tries to bring her back, but realizes she loves the male narwhal that kept pestering their boat. He lets his narwhal go because what made her happy wasn't Fry anymore, and that was something he would just have to accept. Just hearing him say that she, both Leela and Lilu, wouldn't be happy with him, made me realize that you don't need to be the person making the one you love happy. If you truly love them, all that matters is that they are happy, regardless of whether or not it is you bringing them said happiness. You are not the only person that can make them happy, and if you keep trying and failing, you're just hurting both of you. Once I realized that, everything changed. I still love that girl to bits and wish nothing but the absolute best for her. We were never together the way I originally wanted, and that probably helped me gain a better perspective on what loving someone actually entails. She helped me become the person I am today, and for that, I will love her forever and be forever grateful. Edited Spelling Story 7 Two things. One, I can't remember where I first heard this, but it is so true from my experiences to get over someone, get under someone else. I simply found another girl for my mind to obsess over. Two, Whenever my mind used to think about my ex-GF after our breakup, I did not try to avoid thinking about her. I didn't try to avoid the feelings. Instead, I just kept thinking about her and let the emotions get out of my system. I think that if you bottle it up and avoid the feelings, they will stay with you for a lot longer. Just let it out. If you're upset, don't be afraid to cry if you have to. I consider myself to usually be a fairly masculine guy, but I have to admit that I have silently shed some tears a few times in my life after big relationship screw-ups on my behalf. But I feel that letting out the emotions like that quickly helped me get over things a lot quicker. Story 8. Let's see, it's been 10 years and my answer may still be, let me get back to you on that. I happen to love every woman I've fallen in love with still. One recently passed away, and I've been struggling with the fact that we were out of touch, but I still love her. 
Part of it comes down to time. In order to get that time, you have to kind of follow a rote. Go to work, get work done, go out with friends, work out, watch TV, whatever you would normally do. It can feel hollow and boring and like drudgery, but you keep doing it until something catches your eye that brings back a little of the happiness in your life. Might not be a person, might be a place or an activity or just a new thing. One of my exes visited Israel and it blew all of the other trivial concerns completely out of her life. It's her new passion. Some people find it in volunteering. Just keep getting out there and doing things, even when you don't really feel like it. For some people, you need to get away from the person you are trying to get over. Others do better keeping them in their lives in some way. Close proximity will likely catch you up, or at least slow down your processing it. So if you are living together, prepare for a longer slog and try to get out even more if possible. Another thing that has helped me in the past is advice my father gave me. He's twice divorced, and he and my mother have the happiest, most fulfilling relationship I've ever seen, even if it took them a few tries to get there. When my first girlfriend, way back when not a girl I fell in love with, broke up with me, he told me, you can't go back. You might want to give in the opportunity, but you can't go back. There may be exceptions to this rule, and I'm prepared to accept them if they come up. Goodness knows I still hope for it from time to time but it acts well as a guide. Face forward, keep going. If the person you love ever ends up jogging next to you on the path of life again, maybe it will be worth it. But don't let anyone dictate your pace. Don't get hung up on the sidelines. There are a lot of other people on that road with you. Take the time to chat with some or jog quietly by yourself for a little while. But don't look back. Don't take your eyes off the road ahead or you are in for a worse fall than before. Another thing that has helped me is keeping the memory of the person you love in your heart. Even if they've changed or you've grown apart, you love them. You may still, but, and it sounds like this might be the case here, they may not be the person you love anymore. Doesn't mean you have to stop loving that person, but you shouldn't try to force them into that mold. Just jog on and know that for a while you had a great jogging partner to spend time with. Story 9. You do get over it, but it never really feels like you do. The hurt and the longing and the wanting just becomes less and less over time. When you're in the depths of misery and pain, you think that it's unending. But one day it'll be gone completely, but you won't even notice that it disappeared. By then you will have moved on, and you won't even notice it. For me, the worst lasted six months. After that, it slowly went away over two years, with some occasional memories and feels that just hit me out of the blue and set me back. But the general trend was for it to evaporate. For the next few years, I still missed her, but had come to an acceptance and to a peace that we would never be together again. Now, I barely even think about her. Story 10. Three things friends our family. It means a whole lot if you have them there to take your suffering from you, to cheer you up, and to make you think of other things. I would never ever make it without my friends. Alcohol may not be the best solution in the book, but it works for some people. It worked for me in the sense that I had built up so much cow that I had to take it out on something. When I suggested to have a shot race with my friend, it ended with two hours of tears and a massive hangover because I hadn't been processing my feelings properly. So in a sense, alcohol made me push it out and realize that I needed to cry. Time. As most of you people will say, time will heal, patch, and sew you back together. Time will also give you the opportunity to think about who you are and what you want or need in life. I've always been a person who thinks a lot. So time gave me the opportunity to process the things I had gone through. I think a lot of people underestimate this because it's really, really important that you use your head not to block out feelings over time, but to think through the facts that hurt you. It may take a while, but it's better than the feelings bursting like a bubble when you're 40. Story 11. 1. Cut contact, block, delete, insist that they leave you alone. 2. Get angry. How dare you break my heart. Listen to angry music, high-energy stuff, lyrics such as, Son of a bad person, I'm going to break you. Five points if you know the artist. Shout fudge you. As loud as you can, repeatedly, preferably while drunk, preferably with trusted friends, never to your ex. Three, spend loads of money and time on yourself. What do you really want? Make it happen. Treat yourself. Try new cow. Love yourself. I'm talking ridiculous, hilariously egotistical behavior. Hell, be your own god. It's charming. Four give up on love. That way, when it happens again, it will be a massive bonus. Make it your aim to stay free and single. Five, but not on close relationship. The last thing you want is to feel left on the shelf and undesirable. Get out, flirt, tease, fudge, leave, repeat, and one day you will meet someone you can't leave. Story 12. 
I don't know if I ever quite got over it. I don't know if I was supposed to. I have never forgotten him, and I don't think I ever will. I remember the excitement and the smile I couldn't wipe off of my face. I remember sharing things I'd never shared with anyone. I remember watching a whole future spread out before us, what could be. And I remember it slowly being taken away by an undertow. All those dreams and might-have-beens just swallowed up. By circumstance and timing and growing away from each other. Years later, when I think of him now, I just feel grateful and regret and appreciation. Fondness for my younger self, who was less cautious then. A faint gnawing in my heart, some phantom ache for an extension of myself that isn't there anymore. It hurts, it will probably always kind of hurt. But with that comes the knowledge that I wouldn't trade the unhappy ending for anything. That I am better than I was before it. Some people go their whole lives without loving anyone. Every single person that has posted on this board about crying and deleting photos and sending text messages to exes and sleepless in Seattle is lucky to have felt that much for another. So I guess that's how I got over it. After nearly a year of imagining his painful demise and delighting in it, I started to feel thankful for what happened, to not hate him so much, to look at myself before and after and realize I was lovable and capable of love and that was probably the only lesson truly worth learning. Ever, we are all lucky as cow. Story 13. Dated someone else. It didn't work out. Dated someone else. It didn't work out. Got married. It didn't work out. Dated someone else. She was psycho. Had close relationship with a few ugly people. Had close relationship with a few attractive people. Somewhere down the line, you realize that there is no magic force guiding you to be with that one special person. That is a myth. Instead of being depressing, it is actually liberating. You can either get along with a person, trust them, and communicate with them, or you can't. Once you realize you aren't beholden to them by this intangible ghost story about love, you are free to let go of people and find new ones that work out better. Plus, my first love turned out to be a sapphic, so it wouldn't have worked out anyway. Story 14. I just broke up also. I'm also having a tougher time getting over her than I've ever had before in my entire life. I'm 38. My theory on getting over someone is this. One, cut off all contact. Two, use your free time to be around people. If you're going to work out, go to the gym. If you're going to read, go to a park. If you're going to watch a movie, invite a friend over. For instance, I'm writing a book and it's coming along nicely. You'd think that's a solitary activity, but I'm writing it with my close friend. That project is keeping my brain pretty occupied, plus it will likely make us some money. Three, avoid any triggers like music, places you visited together, friends that will talk about them. Four. When you've healed sufficiently, but not totally, start dating again. Your first date will probably be a disaster. Expect it. Live with it. Your second date will probably be much better. Five, wait it out until you find someone that doesn't make you think about the ex all the time. There are plenty of fantastic people out there. Your ex was not God's gift to women men. Your ex had terrible flaws. Your ex was not treating you great. There's someone out there who will love you, be loyal to you. Be kind to you and contribute to your overall happiness. There are plenty of people who fit that description. Just wait for it. You'll find it. Eventually, you'll get over it. That's my plan. It isn't working yet, but I think it will soon. Story 15. I knew sad songs would only get me worse, so after a few days of crying, I started listening to my musical first love, punk rock. Music's a huge deal in my life, and it just gave me the energy I needed to say, fudge off, I'm gonna focus in myself instead of depending on others. In my first relationship, I was totally dependent on my boyfriend, a real-life OAG, and I think that was one of the main reasons it failed. And I needed to see that. I needed to find myself again instead of being this parasite-like person. Of course, I didn't really get over him. Two years later, we got back together. But it helped me grow up and open my eyes to a couple of things. This time, it's a completely different relationship, a healthy and caring one. Before... We were just a couple of teens who didn't really know how to handle their feelings. Thanks to that breakup, we've been able to take our time and realize what we really want. Oop, daughter. I tried as hard as I could not to get depressed and get the best out of the worst. Story 16. It's been three years since she broke up with me, but I don't know if I'm necessarily over her. I do still have very deep feelings for her, and the thought of her still upsets me but not nearly to the degree that it did after she broke it off. Time has dulled the pain, I suppose. It's an odd feeling being in love with someone and yet hating everything about them at the same time. I love who she was and despise everything that she is. Or perhaps maybe I hate that I wasn't good enough or that I was too emotional with her. 
or any of the other reasons that I rationalized in the wake of the breakup. Eventually, I realized that I couldn't blame myself for her not being in love with me anymore. And realistically, I'm a much better person without her. I'm more adventurous, more well-rounded, more sociable. I've been lucky in that I haven't seen or heard from her since we broke up, so I never had to deal with the pain of seeing her with someone else. The thought of it still stings, though, but I'm okay. Story 17, 1. Time 2. Finding things to build my self-esteem, new hobbies, and the such three. New girls that deserve my affection more, and realizing that fact, four. Realizing on those days I kept saying, why am I still in love with her? That I wasn't. I was in love with my image of her, a perfected shadow of who she really was. I realized I wasn't looking at the whole picture, and while I wanted the highs, I forgot what they would cost me. 5. Realizing the perks of the single life, see number 3, 6. Like many people in this thread have said, she still hold a piece of my heart, but not as much. I'm okay with that, because I don't let that piece dictate my life. Story 18. I still haven't... I'm 25 and we were together for over 10 years until she began cheating on me around three years ago because she was bored with me. Six months later, we were divorced and sharing custody of our children. She began living the party lifestyle she wanted and eventually wound up getting involved in prescription candy abuse and eventually candy. She lost control of her life and eventually ended it because she couldn't deal with the choices she made. That was a month ago and I still miss her every day despite the pain and drama she put me through. I got over her after divorce by forgetting the good person she was and focusing on all the bad stuff she did to me and how angry that made me. Now that she's gone, all I remember is the beautiful, amazing woman I gave ten years of my life to. I don't think I'll ever get over her and I wish I had one more chance to tell her how much I still loved her and that she wasn't alone. Story 19. I remember an AMA a while back with someone's great-grandmother and someone asked how she got over her first love. Her response was that she never did. For me, getting over my first love was a lot of wow and a lot of depressing love songs, both in the dark, for 16 plus hours a day. What helps me now, though, is that I'm able to look at where I am, great job, major city, more or less an exciting line of work, and where she is, same small country town, failed pre-med student, and I realize that I'm probably much better off without her. Maybe I got lucky, maybe it wasn't really love, I don't know, but in any case, I think I'm doing well. Story 20. Have you ever broken a rib? It hurts like fudge, but you have absolutely nothing to show for it. You just have to push the pain down and try and get on with your life while it heals. Doesn't work, obviously. You suppress it, but you get rubbed the wrong way of poke too hard, it sets you off. All that pain comes flooding back, and you remember you have a goddamn broken rib and it flipping hurts. It takes a little time, but you manage to ignore the pain again. It goes around in circles, you forget for a while, then it comes back. Over and over. Then one day you wake up and remember you used to have a broken rib. You think about it and it doesn't hurt. You rub it a little, still nothing. You poke it and that was stupid, but luckily you're fine. You got so good at pushing down that pain, you don't remember the last time you felt it. You have no idea how long your rib has been healed for. But here you are. That's how I got over it. Story 21. I never really did. We dated in high school for a year and a half before he broke up with me. He was two grades ahead of me, so I was a junior in HS, and he was a freshman at the community college when we started dating. We were both leaving for four-year universities, and he decided the distance would be too much. I spent the next two years not able to get him out of my mind, casually dated a few people, but never stopped thinking about the first guy. Fast forward to the summer after sophomore year, we reconnected, and we've been together ever since. Dated for four and a half years, and we just got married this summer. It hurt like hell to lose him once, and every day I'm thankful that I got him back. And so grateful that it actually worked out this way, as I know our case is very rare. Story 22. I actually sent the following to a friend over Facebook recently. She'd been dumped by her first real love, and she'd been a close friend back when I was dating my first love. So I know we haven't talked for a while, but I just wanted to say it gets better. You know my situation. Seven years to not only get dumped, but to have her turn on me and tell me I was awful. And I was so obsessed slash dependent slash whatever that I believed it. But it gets better. Time. Anything you can do to build self-confidence. Flirting with everything that moves. Throwing yourself into some big project. Reading The Great Gatsby and watching 500 Days of Summer. Rebounds that are physical and then rebounds that are real. At some point, she stopped being something I wanted back and just became a sad memory. She still comes to mind once in a while and I miss having that intimate a connection with someone. 
but it doesn't hurt anymore. And I love this quote from South Park. Well, yeah, I'm sad, but at the same time, I'm really happy that something could make me feel that sad. It's like, it makes me feel alive, you know? It makes me feel human. And the only way I could feel this sad now is if I felt something really good before. So I have to take the bad with the good, so I guess what I'm feeling is like a beautiful sadness. I guess that sounds stupid. Story 23. Man, I see in this thread the strongest and smartest men who've ever lived. I see all this potential and I see squandering. God, oh, know it. An entire generation whining about worthless girls. Advertising has us chasing the perfect love in person, working jobs we hate so we can buy dinner to the girl we don't need. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all have the perfect relationship, but we won't. And we're slowly learning that fact. And we're very, very pissed off. Story 24. For me, it's the friendship that helps me get over it. I know that it goes against everything that everyone else has said, but it's what personally works for me. For a few days following the breakup, my ex and I had no communication. After the few days, we began to talk again. We established that the talking didn't mean anything beyond friendship, and to this day, that's the way it has been. It's nice not having to miss him. When you keep someone as a friend, you don't always have to miss them. I know that it doesn't work from everyone, but I think that if the relationship ends on amicable terms, it's definitely worth a try. Story 25. GF broke up with me. I felt like I could never get anybody else and that I was a bad person, because honestly, I wasn't the most caring BF to her. I blocked my ex on FB so I wouldn't try and stalk. Talk to her. I always ran to the beach to keep my mind calm. I did selfless acts for others to prove to myself that I wasn't someone who only thinks about himself. Then a girl comes by, one of those girls where you look at her and say to yourself, oh no, she's beautiful. She kissed me, and it made me feel hopeful for myself. That maybe there is someone else out there for me, and that I'm not all that bad of a BF. Story 26. Time, bro, time. It's taken me about seven months to wake up and not think about her. Part of me is still a little sad that I haven't spoken to my friend of eight years. But the rest of me remembers that when I tried to talk to her about some fears I was having, she cut and ran. Not once did she fight for what we had, even while I was trying my hardest. And that was telling. But realizing that even after so long, she wasn't the girl I thought I knew is something I could never had done without time. Time lets you stop only thinking about the good times and how lonely you are, and lets you remember the bad cow, the reasons why you broke up. Story 27. Break up, they way I handled it and lived through. The day my breakup happened started as absolutely normal day in my life. Saturday after brunch. Well, the story here is not the breakup itself, but the feelings I went through, the emotions I overcame, the actions I have taken. To be completely fair with you, I was not the angel in the relationship. However, my partner was not a perfect furry kitten as well. However, my marriage was over. After the breaking news, I realized that after seven years together, Unfortunately, we have come to the wall that none of us was willing to climb. I think this will give you a good picture of the couple that decided to take its separate paths. My first feelings were by the book denial. My frightened brain was simply refusing even to hear the words of my partner. Refused to understand, and refused to even give it a slightest chance of being the way things are. Then I got into the phase of trying to fix things. You know, when you believe that you will change the way you are in a matter of right now. I was not willing to give up because I tried to deny it and it did not help. I set my mind on the feeling that I was the problem, that I was broken in some way and I need to immediately patch it and everything will be all right. Thankfully, both phases went through me fairly fast in a matter of couple hours. I say phases because I believe that feelings I have experienced are liquid and can change from one state to another in no particular order. Then the mature me woke up and gave myself a very good slap on the face. And if I wouldn't be able to get it together, I would have asked my friends to get me out of the state that I wouldn't want to think of myself years down the road. I felt that I have stepped out of my body and saw myself from the corner of the room. I spoke calmly now about how we will proceed with the decision I was thrown at. How we will split assets. How we will take care of common debt. Who will move and who will stay. Next day, I was leaving to fly across the globe to spend 10 days with my parents. Trip that we planned to go together. My partner escaped the moment when I was leaving. He escaped the moment when I was hurt at most. Now I understand that he did not care for my pain, or maybe just maybe he was not able to help me to go through it. I don't blame him, it was his choice. But a good note for myself, 
that I wouldn't want to be as cruel to anyone. I cried as my plane was taking off, but was prepared to spend next 16 hours of my trip to read books about divorce, about breakups, about pain and ways to cope. As I was reading those books, I noted couple points that I made me feel better. One, make a plan for your future. Plan out six months, one year, five years. Envision yourself how what person you want to be. What are your values? After being in a relationship for seven years, the border between me and us was so thin, I couldn't separate myself from my partner. Two, focus on being healthy and active. Some books recommended to walk. And I actually think that running and more active exercise is more beneficial. As I was burning more calories, I also had no time to think about the breakup. I only thought if I can run one more mile at the speed as I was going. So exercise gave me an hour when I had no time or energy to drown in my grief. Three, allowing yourself to grief. It wouldn't hurt if it wouldn't be real. It's okay to grieve for the lost love, lost friend, lost dreams, and lost future. Let it take your heart. Let yourself go through it. It will take a lot of time, but make sure when you are at your darkest, you have your plan near you to remind you who you are, what are you doing, and who do you want to be. Four, support of my sister was the biggest and left the most impact. She was there for me to listen when I cried. She was here when I was writing my plan. I'm grateful for her presence. She was my breakup buddy. She gave me her heart to take away my tears and fill in with her kind words, her optimism. Five, I also stopped drinking. Alcohol could have taken me back in my progress, and every day I am making progress. My steps were small, but I patted myself on my back for them. I answered all my emails. You are the best. I run amazing. I did not cry today. You go, girl. My biggest regret is that I was consumed with my grief on my mom's birthday. Story 28. Loss gives you chances. I knew if I'd stay together with my ex, it would eat me up. He was not ready for the wide world yet. I wanted to taste the soil of every freaking inch of this planet and just dive into experiences like I don't care. I had to break up and it was one of the toughest things I ever did. Of course, I asked him to stay friends. I was 21 back then and we were together for four or five years. I couldn't stand the thought of really loosing him. Needless to say, it didn't work, but it was worth it. I worked, I traveled, I went to Hamburg for studying. I got my brains messed up out and did the things I wanted to do. And now I'm in a relationship for a year by now. He's amazing. I'm moving to Berlin now. We plan on traveling the world, party hard, and terminate our brains with booze and close relationship. My ex? Sure, I still stalk him like once in two months or so. He's engaged by now to a girl that seems lovely. He lives in Bavaria. I would have hung myself in Bavaria, but I'm glad if he's as happy as I am. Every loss is a chance. Story 29. I'm kind of late to this thread, so I doubt many people will see this, but here I go. I dated a girl for about eight months. We were about 17 at the time. She was my first, and only, real girlfriend ever. I was downright crazy over her. I thought it was too good to be true, and we spent literally every single day together, never got tired of each other either. Had no idea it was possible for anyone to be so perfect for me and feel the same towards me as I did them. She became my first. We would even have close relationship too, three times a day, just because we couldn't get enough of each other. We'd laugh, wrestle, cuddle, and watch movies together, make each other meals in the morning, just everything was perfect. Literally the best eight months of my life by far. Then one day, when our eighth month anniversary came around, she breaks up with me over text about an hour before we were supposed to go out on our date, which I had already paid for and didn't give any reason. She has close relationship with some random guy she knows the next day, then proceeds to date a different guy the day after that for about a week, and of course has close relationship with him. Then dates another dude a week after that, but for a month or two, and every couple months since she just keeps changing boyfriends, and every once in a while I tried forgiving her and taking her back, and she always pulls the no one is quite like you, and I have always loved you, and I just want to be with you, only to fudge things up the next week or so. It's been two and a half years since we broke up, and I still think about her literally every day. I blocked her on all social network sites and deleted and forgot her number and, and haven't talked to her since. Did all this about a year ago. I don't know how you guys do it, but I would have thought I'd be over it by now. Even when I go to parties or meet girls, no matter how beautiful or how great their personality is, I just have no real sense of attraction for them. Sure, if I'm really drunk and a girl wants it, I'll go in the back room with her. But in all honesty, it just means nothing, and I barely even enjoy it myself. You'd think almost three years later, after dating someone for only eight months, I'd be over it. Guess not. Story 30. With the perspective of 30 years, I can safely say that you never really get over your first love. We're still friends to this day, and I'm still in love with her. 
The interesting part is that I'm not in love with who she is now. I'm happy that we're still friends, but I have no desire to be with her today. I'm still in love with who she was 30 years ago, or at least my memory of who she was 30 years ago. First love is very intense. In some ways, no other love you have will ever replace it. That's not to say you won't fall deeply in love again, but it's never quite the same, never quite as perfect, never quite as sweet. So you never get over it. Instead, it becomes part of who you are and you carry it around with you for the rest of your life. Story 31. She's been gone for five years now. We have only spoken once. I've dated and slept with literally dozens of women in the last five years. I still dream about her every single flipping night. She's getting married soon. I found where she was and gave my last shot at telling her I spent six years still loving her. She just told me I'm sorry, I'm really happy, and walked away. Know what, though? Sometimes you have to get that closure. I feel so much better right now. It can be hard to move on if you feel you never finished what you had to do. So say your piece if you must and walk. The dreams haven't stopped, though. Story 32. We started dating when we were 12. We're 20 now, and it's been seven horrible months since we decided to separate. I quit my job, dropped my classes, and did nothing but lay around in pain for a few weeks. Then I got sick for a few more weeks and learned how to be sick alone. When I felt better, I found a new job, and I'm a manager now. He tried to get back together. I refused. He moved on. Then I wanted to get back together. He refused. I'm still on the moving on part. I dream about him every night, and I think about him every day. We tried to be friends, but it always led to close relationship. And when I found out he was flipping anything else with a hole, I became disgusted with him altogether, which made everything hurt even worse. Now neither of us trust each other, and as much as I wish I could fix all the nonsense— I tried as hard as possible, but it just wasn't happening. I doubt it ever will, and it's so hard to come to terms with that. The last nice time we had together was my dad's wedding, August 25th. I paid for a hotel room. We got drunk and had fun, and had a lot of lovey and passionate close relationship. I got us fancy breakfast in the morning. Less than a week later, I found out he was actually cheating on his new boyfriend with me that night. I tried to gently confront him about it, but it turned into a huge fight, and he made me cry harder than I ever had. I deleted him from Facebook and avoid him altogether. His parents watch our dog while I'm at work, but he mostly sits up in his room smoking candy with his latest friend, and I never see him. I like to pretend the wedding was the last time we saw each other because it was the nicest time I've had in years, and I want to leave with happy memories. It's been about two weeks since the fight, and I'm finally starting to feel like it might get better. I took all the hours I could at work, Started seeing a therapist, listened to lots of great music, got a gym membership, and joined the Air Force. I'm going to build a new life for myself with a free degree and a full government hookup someplace far away from here. It still terminates me every day, but I'm remaining optimistic. I don't have many friends, but those I do have are being really wonderful right now, so that helps. I'm working on building a support system for myself and learning how to be an adult on my own. It's really empty and strange right now but my therapist is helping me get my life in order how I want to and become independent. I'm starting to realize that I deserved better all along and that we are incompatible. I think I'm starting to heal. I will always love him so much. He will always have a piece of my heart, and I'm sure I will always miss the happy times with him growing up and figuring out life together. I'm really grateful for the time we had, but it's finished now and I have to come to terms with it. I'm starting to think that it might even be nice to find someone else once I've got my own cow together. I feel like it's getting better already. Man, even if no one reads this, it felt good to get it out. Live on, brothers and sisters. There is always more out there. Story 33. After 2,000 replies, this will get buried. That's not stopping me from throwing my hat in the ring, though. Make a list of things you want to get better at or try for the first time. The tasks should be long enough to make you feel occupied while having clear goals that are easy to accomplish and see progress in. For instance, mine were gain 10 pounds of muscle, learn 20 songs on guitar, visit another continent, lay in the grass and do nothing for a whole week. By the time you've finished all these, one, you're a better person than you started out as, and two, enough time has passed where the wounds have somewhat healed. Story 34, a combination of time, pursuing someone else, and realizing that we both are now two totally different people from the time that I loved her. Honestly, while there were are no hard feelings, I really don't have any kind of serious feelings for her anymore. We still talk once in a blue moon, and we're still friends and all, but hey, cow happens and I've moved on. Also, stop talking to them for a while, potentially a long while. It'll suck at first, but it gets better. In that time, 
Try to find someone else if you still are looking for a relationship. And for the record, if you find someone and start something with them, if the first guy starts talking to you again, do not just drop the guy you met like a used napkin. Funny, fairly recent story. Girl, not the one I was in love with. On and off likes a friend of mine. Friend stops talking to her for a while. Other mutual friend introduces girl to me. Things go really, really well for a while. Talking every day. Watching movies together. Online over AIM and Skype, but still. Talking on the phone every night for like an hour before going to sleep. Plenty of flirting back and forth. Stuff like that. I thought things were going awesomely. Friend starts talking to girl again. Girl completely drops all interest in me immediately. Feels bad, man. Story 35. Love is probably an overstatement, but I had really strong feelings for my first college girlfriend. We only dated for six months or so, but the relationship felt more real than anything that had come before. We didn't actually have that much in common, so the relationship ran its course, and she broke up with me in a pretty mature way. She said she cried about it for three days and got the worst of it out. I wasn't so lucky. I felt pretty down for a couple of weeks. Trying to throw myself into classes, but mostly just hyperfixating on what went wrong. I spent a lot of time alone and essentially wallowing as much as I could. I was a college freshman on a big campus. It was easy to get lost and go where no one would recognize you. I wasn't hiding, per se, but certainly easy to avoid mostly everyone and claim that I was studying, which I was at least some of the time. One afternoon, I was eating lunch in the commons by myself while arguably doing some homework. I had headphones on and was listening to one of the older 15 GB iPods. I was listening to it on Shufflem, and the tracks on there were pretty eclectic, some modern pop, a lot of alt-rock, my dad's classic rock, and a fair amount of stand-up comedy. That's when I see my ex now there with another guy. I will say, they seemed like they were there as friends, rather than anything more, which wouldn't have been any of my business anyway but it still made me feel like absolute garbage. About ten seconds after seeing her, my iPod shuffles to the next song, and the guitar riff by the Eagles starts up. I start laughing. I took it as a sign and opted to wallow at least like 50% less than I had to try to see my friend's study buddies more for healthier distractions. It's not that I never felt sad about the breakup again, but I think that was the turning point I needed. Story 36. Ah... Uh... I just thought about what happened, potential mistakes I might have made, adjusted by behavior, and then moved on to the next girl. It wasn't some huge commitment or concern, really, because I had already observed tons of people throughout my life flipping up relationships constantly. I kind of expected to fudge mine up, especially the first one. The one thing I committed myself to was always reflecting on things afterwards and using the experience as a means to learn more about myself, what I like, don't like, and then use those new parameters to seek better, more healthy relationships in the future. Story 37. It depends. Was it a bad breakup, or did you break up because it just wasn't working out? Bad breakup? Depending on the why. Unfollow them on everything, get rid of whatever they gave you, talk about it with your friends, etc. It just didn't work out. Remain friends if you can. I know most don't agree with this. But it may work. Both situations. Follow your passion. Find a new hobby. Work on yourself go to the gym, go to a concert, do something for you, and do things you wouldn't normally do, within reason, if you were still with them, because they don't enjoy whatever activity. Just don't be reckless. Future, you probably won't appreciate that. Story 38. The second one introduced me to BDSM, at which point I realized there were very good reasons we broke up, and that my then-current relationship was so much better, particularly for the reason you think. Besides, it was high school, so I didn't expect our relationship would last forever. I did understand how it works. I was also not fond of my first girlfriend following our breakup. It just gave me some perspective. Since then, I literally have not spent one minute missing her. I now see that we were bad for one another, and it just wouldn't ever have worked. I haven't seen her in over 20 years, and I would like to keep it that way. Story 39. Wank, cry, exercise. Wank, feel sad. Wank, exercise, therapy. Then on the second day, wank, wank, beer, cry, walk, cry, wank, call a friend, and be depressing. Go to work for five days, we two intermittent crying and wanking. Repeated for six months. Went away on holiday for a month in South America. Came back and had such a great time, I forgot them mostly. Or at least I felt so good. The trick, all jokes aside, is improve yourself. Not to get them back, but to make sure next time you know what to avoid. Decide what you want 
and what you want to avoid. Don't get with someone straight away as you never decompress and think about what went wrong. It won't just be their fault, and if you're smart, you'll know what you need to work on, too. Story 40. In high school, I was friends with this girl who lived down the street who I had a huge crush on. Senior year, we started dating towards the end of the summer, and I was so happy. She ended up dumping me that summer for a dude she apparently hated. Dude was a huge bully, typical rich parents jock type. That sucked, but I was able to get over it in college when I started dating other girls. Now, the girlfriend I had years later who sometimes I wanted to spend the rest of my life with really sucked, even though I was the dumper. I broke it off because she was so controlling and wouldn't let me have a life outside of us. Stopped hanging out with friends and stuff until I realized the stress she was causing me. I still actually think of her because besides that, we were great together. I just hope gets help and is doing well. Story 41. I don't think it's getting over because then you won't forget what happened between you. I thought that way for a long time, and when a relationship ended, I sort of embraced the bad feelings. I didn't enjoy them or try to bring them to the surface. In that way, I felt like I got wiser and more mature. More like these peeps hold special places in your heart. These people come into your life and you learn more about others and yourself. The funny thing is now with Facebook, it's possible to catch up with them. Hold on to the good memories and learn from the things that didn't go well. And it's easy to fall deeply for someone. You just learn if it's worth building on or moving to something healthier. Most importantly, don't pressure yourself to have to feel something. Oh boy, you'll know when it hits you.